Hey, Les, how's it going? I'm good. How about you? Good, man. Bobby Wagner, what do you like about him? Why did you decide to invest in the middle linebacker at this point? It, it, it was He was a really good player, a lot of experience that was available right that uh you know that wanted to you know try to continue his journey in football with with a right with a hometown team a team he, that he felt like uh had a chance to continue winning like he's been a part of it in Seattle so it, it was one of those there was you know all, all things considered an opportunity that we definitely analyzed and uh Jack that Bobby right chose the Rams he said that he had barely been released before AD and Jalen were texting him saying, you got to join the Rams. Uh, does that indicate that not only, you know, Von, Von didn't sign with Buffalo until a week later, but does that indicate that middle linebackers position where this defense in general thinks that it can improve and become, become a more potent versatile force? Well, what we, what we, what we definitely talk through because we do like uh, Ernest Jones and, and as you know, we sat with uh myself sat with Sean and, and Raheem and the defensive staff and, and discussed how we could use, right. How, uh, you know, let's call it the defenses and the, and the tactics that we could use with both of those players on the field uh, instead of, you know, cause we, at the end of the day, right. You, you don't necessarily want to put one of your better up and coming younger players on the bench for a veteran, but obviously uh, it, you know, there's, there's often there's two, inside linebackers on the field I, not many not many times nowadays is there three uh in the in the four three schemes maybe but uh in our scheme there's there's two on there so how do we best utilize both of those players and does that make us stronger and, and obviously uh we came to the conclusion that it did thank you jordan what's up les how you doing man how's it going jordan good um what was it? have you ever negotiated a deal with a player who represents himself before? And what was it like getting to know Bobby and then um, working through that? I know obviously you guys have other people that sometimes do some of the the heavy numbers work, but what was that like um, working through that process and and understanding that he was very much going through on one side maybe a bit of an emotional process with the release, but then also, you know, really working to make sure that he had the right deal for himself? It's a, a good question. I, I I was thinking, I don't know if we've ever had a, that we've ever actually done a deal with a player who didn't have an agent. We, we, we have done deals like when Andrew Whitworth, uh, you know, even Matthew Stafford, you know, players that are veterans where you end up communicating with the player and, and trying to come up with a win-win. But I, 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 off the top of my head, this could be the first time we've actually executed a deal with a player who didn't have an agent. And at the end of the day, from, from the beginning, I know Bobby was interested in us based on locale, his hometown, uh, things like that. And, and we weren't really planning for the opportunity. We did let Bobby know that, hey, we need to analyze the opportunity and make sure it was right for us. Again, going back to the, hey, having both Bobby and Ernest on the field at the same time type equation. And with that being said, we also we also knew in, in well, uh, working with Bobby that we encouraged him through the whole process that he definitely, right, should take time to go through the process, to talk with other teams, to visit with other teams. We, we were very clear, you know, from the beginning kind of where what we could and couldn't do. And we worked with him through that and, and then let him know that, hey, we would be patient on our and that he could then go through his process, uh, right, to, to get a feel for the landscape. Because this was the first time he was actually free, right? In the, in the past, he had renegotiated with Seattle, his, you know, let's call it incumbent team. And then just a quick follow up for you. Um, I think in the past, people kind of made the joke that Bobby Wagner, especially you guys facing him two times a year for, 10 years was kind of like the one that got away for you um, in the draft process. So what was it like um, sort of reviving that relationship and um, what's it like for you now to have him on your side? It's, it's interesting. I think I mentioned it to you about a thousand tech tackles later, we get Bobby Wagner, but they, I, I did that in a, in, a, in a draft setting or one of the what post draft settings where, where sometimes when you're in the draft, you're trying to navigate where someone would get picked I know, uh, I know uh, Coach Fisher, Jeff Fisher, was, was very high on Bobby Wagner, but he didn't go to the combine that year. 
So, and not because he wasn't invited, he had pneumonia and, and, and being a group of five non-combine, you, you felt like maybe we could get him a little later in the second, things like that. Didn't work out. So the Bobby Wagner rule became, you know what, if you just like a player, don't try to figure out where he is or isn't going, just pick the guy. But, uh, and that's not the, right, that's not the only reason we didn't do it. But I, I do think getting him at, at this point is, guess what? You, We've been able to watch him <laughs> Uh, and play against him, compete against him intimately for probably too many years now. So uh, he's always had an impact on what Seattle was trying to accomplish on the defensive side of the ball and, and probably as a team based on his his leadership and, and things like that. So we're jacked to get him at this standpoint. Thanks, Les. Well, I guess we could have definitely – it would have helped, right? At minimum that he's not helping Seattle, right, if he would have. Uh, just come here and we'd have deleted a thousand tackles from them. But that's the draft. That's life. Lessons you learn. You, you try to go back in and then really write down journal what you learn from those. Because Bobby's not the only one that got away. Uh, there's others as well. And you try to learn and apply and how you, you get better moving forward. And then there's some that got away that you're actually glad they got away and you never admit that you actually wanted them in the first place. That's how this draft thing works. Justin. Les, good to see you. Who's, is it, who's speaking? Kevin. Okay, Kevin, how's it going, Kevin? Good, good to see you, thanks. I, I mean, artist, I thought you said Dusty. I'm like, wait a minute, is it <laughs> Dusty? Dusty Rhodes, I don't know, do you remember Dusty Rhodes? Who's, I'm a, okay. you know, I was a wrestling fan back in the day. <laughs> dream. Okay, Kevin. Okay, back to, uh, Back to football. Um, following up on what you were just talking about, you watched uh, Wagner for 10 years. Uh, how have you seen his skills change? Have they diminished at all as he now is going into his 32 year old season? We, I think you can, I mean, I think maybe when you're young, you're a little bit, maybe a little bit sprier, but you can usually see players like himself, you know, Andrew Whitworth for, you know, that they've taken care of their body. So it's not like, Oh, wow. They, they hit the wall physically. But what I do think uh, what you can see and feel is he's, a, he's a very, I, let's call it football smart has the football. We call it geometry instinctive player. There, there's a, he has a feel for the, the angles of the game, the geometry of the game, you know, in, in run past situations and, and right. How, how, having, you know, the ability to navigate through, traffic chaos blockers coming at him and, and still you know making a lot of tackles at or near line of scrimmage and, and, and knowing when uh oh that there could be a play action pass there and being able to drop in, in zones and things like that so uh that's what happens when you know players like himself that uh are physically gifted enough to continue playing this long they, there's usually a a wisdom that maybe the uh young players do not have yet right you you can only gain that wisdom yeah, and, and uh, more for reps. It's been a long time since the Rams had a a, a star, an established star uh, uh, at inside linebacker. How does that change the defense? You know, in in some sort of quality. No, the, here's what's what's really uh, which the way we see it too is is there there is I mean he's obviously someone who can come in and and, and let's call it handle the green dot. Uh, it's great. Everybody, I love telling, trying to explain to my mom what a green dot is, but I think we all know that someone that can write, uh, like make the defensive calls. There's, there's also a side of him and, and he really enjoys this. He said is, is he'll be able to pass along some wisdom to Ernest as Ernest continues to grow. So there's a, there's an element. He has some cliff notes, right. That he maybe uh, can pass along to, to Ernest you know, as as he passed the torch and, and things like that. But they both of both of these players are very I mean, with him and Ernest on the field at the same time, very instinctive players. They have a, you know, mom, dad, God gave them an, an element of of length, which allows the, those players tough to shoot over them when you're trying to pass over them in zone. It's it's tough to it is tough for offensive linemen to engage with them because they can use, you know, their their arms to, you know, keep blockers off of them and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, it's hey, it's two two really good instinctive football players that right that just have a in it uh, ability to figure out the geometry of the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Claudia. 
Piles, great to see you again. How's it going, Claudia? Doing great. Um, you know that everything, obviously, in the league, it's going to be improving. What are you focused um, on the, to improve this defense, especially, you know, talking about the division, you know? You know, I think the competition. I think, I mean, the competitions, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, really tough division, has been. Do, do not see it. Uh, getting any easier and, and maybe maybe Seattle not having Russell is is probably the, the best addition a defense in our division can make but uh, at the end of the day I think we we're, we're, we've always been a team right where we know we want to affect the passer uh, and and kind of disrupt the passer uh, obviously stop the run Bobby's a unbelievable run defender. Uh, when you stop and run, you're able to then get people in the known, you know, teams in the known passing down. So we'll continue to evolve there. We've always been able to, uh, or we've all historically in the last few years, we've been a team that, that has pressured the quarterback. Uh, and, and we continue want to continue. We, we want to continue to do that. And, uh, and, and just as you, as you lose players, we lost Von Miller. So we'll have to pressure the QB differently than we did the second half of, of last season and, and maybe go back to doing it the ways we have, you know, in previous years and things like that. So that's just something that that comes and evolves and we take it day by day, go through, OT, we'll get through the draft, we'll go through OTAs, we'll go to training camp and and we may even go, uh, you know, you know, halfway through the season and try to figure out, oh, is are there different people that we could add uh, to the team to help not necessarily, uh, let's call it, changing schematically or evolving schematically. It's not going to have a household change schematically, but there's always tweaks along the way. Thank you so much. Gary. Uh, hey, Les. Um, hey, Gary. You know, um, regardless of what the, I guess, the true, you know, dollar averages are and whatnot in the contract um, for Bobby Wagner, it seems like you guys have made a departure from you know, not investing very much monetarily at inside line, linebacker and 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 luring him to Los Angeles. It, was that a matter of this is just a player that's too good to pass up? <clears throat> we can do it on our terms. But we're going to have to, you know, raise our ceiling a little bit to get him. Or what went into the, the thought in terms of that financial investment? Yeah, exactly that, Gary. It, I mean, there's there's reasons we have invested in other places and not necessarily, you know, inside linebacker, but we, we've, we've always tried to put good players on the field. Some of them might've been in, in rookie contracts and things like that. In this case, right. Bobby Wagner, look, the, the resume speaks for itself. Uh, you know, all pro our offensive staff gets to game plan against him right twice a year so they they know what it feels like to play against him and we just felt like the the person and the player regardless this is when it gets into inside linebackers is basically three three letters in the alphabet but sometimes the person and the skill set that person brings to the table you know is, is greater than you know those three letters in in the alphabet so but uh you hit the nail on the head in, in how you ask the question and just I'm in curious in terms of the process. I know you monitor, you know, you monitor transactions, you monitor what's being reported and whatnot. Um, when when he was released, when you saw he was released, did your I don't know the hair on your neck go up in the back or your ears perk a little bit or you know what was that what was that initial reaction when Bobby Wagner is available? Well, yeah, I think it's it's oh wow, and obviously I think someone mentioned earlier right that that. I think, I think it was in Bobby's press conference, right? That Aaron and, and Jalen reached out to him. So I know I know those those players definitely respect Bobby. And what's what's neat about, and, and I'll continue saying this, uh, you know, having let's call it from the top down, from Stan down, Stan moving the team to LA to building SoFi, uh, right to to the locale of Southern California, there's a, there's a intrigue from players, us having, you know, being an established winner when our, when the players vet our coaching staff, they, they want to come here. They know it, it, it is a culture that a player would like to play in. And also a, a player realizes, you know, they have a chance to play some of their best football here. So I think all of those variables give us 
opportunities opportunities in these type cases that that might not be the case if we weren't in Southern California, if we didn't have SoFi Stadium, if we weren't winning, uh, all those things. So I think it's it's pretty neat that uh, we get that opportunity, and it, and it's 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 up to us to analyze those and, and determine whether right uh, we should uh, strike or not. Thank you. Artists, who are we going to next? Oh, I'm from Eric. I thought I was on mute. I'm sorry, Eric. Eric, Eric you're on mute. mute. Yeah, Eric, you're not on mute, but we can't hear you. No, sir. We'll 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 come back and we'll come back around. Uh, Brady. Hi, Les. Uh, Brady Henderson from ESPN. It's nice to talk to you. Um, going back to the 2012 draft, do you remember where you were planning on taking Bobby, where you thought you could get him? You know, I, 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 I do because, you know, because of, since we signed him, people have reached out and, 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 and we talked about it as a family. So I, I do, I do know this. We ended up picking uh, Janoris Jenkins, I think somewhere there in the second, and we had discussed taking uh, Bobby Wagner uh, even with our let's call it our next second round pick maybe even into our early third so he was always someone that was on our board and, and at the end of the day I think he went maybe a couple of picks going back to the good old Wikipedia this weekend I think he went a couple of picks uh in front of us so uh it would be interesting I, going back to the to that draft would we have taken him with that that next pick I know we picked Isaiah Pete I know we liked Isaiah I know we were uh you know intentional or in that year trying to uh impact the uh offense because of the you know we had a young QB in Sam Bradford but I know we really liked Bobby Wagner I know coach Fisher really liked Bobby Wagner and I think I, I've said it it might have gotten written you know I've apologized to him a few times over the years for probably let's call it misstrategizing the Bobby Wagner thing because I know he, he was a big fan of Bobby did, did that really become kind of a new philosophy you, you mentioned? I think you mentioned the, the Bobby Wagner rule. Do you guys really cite that? You know, uh, it's interesting. I explained that rule to uh, Cooper Cup and he asked, well, did I apply to that rule? Because we waited till the uh, third round to pick him. So, you know, that would be a one time where you could apply that rule, but you didn't. So I think uh, we're always trying to determine, right, where we could acquire a player in, in, when we might have to strike because the, the the vision would be right to get as many good players that we want as possible so you, you're always trying to handicap that in a, in a sense but I do think it gets a little bit tougher into the uh you know when we start getting into the late second third to truly truly you know handicap that but uh yes that would be the rule if you if you really like a player I usually say if you really like a player and, and you're gonna really really lose sleep and toss and turn right over losing that player uh, and go ahead and pick that player and, and versus maybe trading back to acquire more picks or, or uh, handicapping that you might can get him at the, the following pick and things like that. So that would be the, the Bobby B Wagner rule that I would say we, we definitely try to discuss when we go to pick. If we're going to toss and turn over losing the player, then let's, let's go ahead and make the phone call and make him around. <laughs> 